There we go. Now my mic is actually working. <laughs> yes, subculture talk. For those of you that have just been staring at the screen for a few seconds, uh, just saying that uh, my name is Pat626, and I host a goth industrial radio show called Subculture Talk, and I'm a very professional. Uh, in Subculture Shock, I play a lot of bands, including Talking to Shadows, and I am blessed tonight uh, to have Ron Weldon of Talking to Shadows in my virtual studio. Hi, Ron. Hey, Pat. What's up? Oh, off to a, a fantastic start so far. But okay, we good. Can, we can hear me and we can hear you now, so I'd say that uh, we are good to go. Yep, sounds good. So, uh, I've been playing Talking to Shadows for a uh, few months now. I actually, what, even before your EP was released, um, when you just had one song up, uh, Christiane Knight, uh, DJ Zion sent me this and was like hey you need to play this and she as usual was right um but uh it sounds to me like you've also just been a a bit of a fixture in the baltimore music scene for quite some time yeah i i've been i've been around for some time i guess you could say on and off you know i've been here back in the city for maybe i don't know 15 years you know i lived all around chicago california you know but most of my music stuff is is here so as i i like to say you know especially the first time i interview someone i always like to start off with what i call the super villain origin story so how did you get in to goth in general and then more importantly into making music that is at the very least goth adjacent, if not always specifically in the goth genre? Um, well, growing up, I guess, in the pre-computer era, um, it was a lot harder to get music and to, to really hear new bands and and at that time talking early 80s um a lot of the music that i was able to get access to was from people a little older than myself so um i remember first getting exposed to a lot of west coast punk rock stuff um you know like your typical circle jerks black flag all that kind of stuff um And then I started meeting more people who then had, again, older friends that were listening to different types of stuff. And then that's when I really started to discover bands like Joy Division, um, Bauhaus, some of the really early Cure stuff. Um, That was that was when I started moving away from the the punk rock stuff and more gravitating towards what I guess today would be called more the post-punk kind of stuff. Um, That's when my interest in music really started to take off when I started to find something I could identify with. And like I said, it really all began with Joy Division, you know, and then into you know, some of the other stuff that was around at that time, like the Bunny Men and, you know, the the probably first Simple Minds record, stuff like that. But it wasn't, there was no real kind of, I guess, again, it was hard because there was no real internet. So we didn't really get a lot of the label stuff. So the the first stuff that I that I really heard that that really turned me on to what would become identified as gothic stuff was when I first heard the Sisters of Mercy Temple of Love 12 inch. And to me, I, that was it. It's like I had never heard anything like that that I could really identify with. And and I, and I was sold after that on it. And I, I really started to gravitate towards that. It's almost like you got a fire from the fireworks up above. Yeah, pretty much. It's like... <laughs> Like, uh, and again, with with Joy Division coming from a musician perspective, it was, I always identified with the bass player, with the bass lines. Like I I first saw, and I didn't even play bass then, 
you know, I was, I was playing synthesizers. And so, but I always liked the bass sound of Gothic music in general. And even to this day, like I can tell stuff that I'm going to like based on how the bass sounds, how the rhythm section sounds basically. So that, that's really what, what got me stuck with, with the Gothic stuff. And, and I tend to still today gravitate to bands that sound similar or influenced by sisters, you know, like I went from sisters to like, you know, Nephilim, you know, mission stuff. Man, you just, you hit a lot of my favorites there. Uh, I, I had to like, perk up a little bit of course sisters it's you almost can't go one of my dj sets without hearing sisters of mercy uh but also echo and the bunny men i feel like was just like the sisters kind of hit that that kind of pulsating driving goth rock echo was what really brought to life some of the swirlier sounds that would uh then get adapted by you know like certain forms of dark wave and shoegaze and things like that sure sure i i agree i mean and and even around that time too it was like i was discovering bands like chameleons you know that all that stuff it, it was really fresh when i was growing up it was like they were brand new pretty much brand new bands so you i was hearing them really almost at the at the peak of of their abilities it makes me a little jealous, honestly. I I didn't start getting into to that sort of stuff until like the mid late nineties. So yeah, you, you got to jump start on me. Yeah, even even like the Banshees, you know, the Banshees, the Cult, all that stuff was super fresh, like around eighty four, like in America anyway. You right. Know? So. You said that you were uh, kind of playing synthesizer at that point. What changed? What what kind of got you into playing bass like you do now for Talking to Shadows? Um, well, I had always I had always wanted to play bass. I um I I never really had time to really invest myself in it. So I had always tinkered around with with keyboards and I tried playing guitar and I tried singing for a while. Um, I never really could do guitar. It's too frustrating for me. It's too small. Like the strings are really close together and all that kind of stuff. So it's very frustrating. So when I moved back to Baltimore, maybe whatever, I'd say, like I said, like maybe 15 years or less ago, I decided to try try to learn bass and so I bought a you know an inexpensive bass and I pretty much taught myself how to play along with like a drum machine you know and then I just kept going and going until I could find people to play music with so you said that you've been in uh, quite a few it's a bands we were talking before the the show about how you'd played in like some post punk stuff and even did vocals in another band. Uh, your current project, Talking to Shadows, how did that come to be? Well, it it really just comes out of I think my my frustration with finding people. It's it's been an ongoing thing, you know, my whole musical. Th- career i guess if you want to call it a career um we're gonna call it a career right (laughs) and not well-paying career so so i i always liked gothic music from when i was a kid and it was it has always been very hard for me to find like-minded musicians in baltimore to play gothic music and I, i just was never able to do it so you know, I figured, well, maybe it'll be easy if I find people that want to do like some shoegaze stuff, you know? So I was like, I'll meet them halfway, you know? <laughs> I can't find goth people. So maybe I can find some shoegaze and maybe squeeze a little goth stuff in it too, you know? So that's kind of how 
the the talking to shadow stuff got going i met a a guitar player who is no longer in the band but i met him and he was really into shoegaze stuff so i go okay well let's get together let's try to do some stuff and we started doing that and then through an ad i met carolyn who's the singer now and she has a very diverse background in in doing her own type of music she was doing a lot of um i don't know if you necessarily want to call it electronic music but you know she does you know home studio stuff and she sings and she does keyboard stuff and so she wanted to sing and so we started working with her then then the guitarist he developed a hearing problem oh, no. and then, yeah he got whatever they call that that um that ringing in the ear thing uh, tinnitus yes yes oh, so no. yeah he got that and then he because once we started really evolving and i started bringing bigger amps around it was just too much for him he, he couldn't handle it so then carolyn and i were kind of on our own and we were just kind of like well what are we going to do now and i was like well we can't give up we have a couple songs recorded and I was like, let's just look for, for a guitar player. And then I put out another ad and, you know, saying, Hey, I'm looking for somebody to do some shoegaze stuff because for me, like, again, it's about the bass, but it's also about a guitar sound that, that I really like. Um, and again, that, that takes me back into what the guitar sound I really like, say, with the mission. Yeah. You know, the real kind of chimey, clangy, multi-affected guitar. So Greg responded to one of my ads and he sent me a sample of his recording. And once I heard it, I was like, that's it. I was like, I that guy's really good and he's got the sound that I want that's very hard to find. And so we started working with him and and he's absolutely great and you know carolyn has great lyrics she's really developed as a singer um so we went on like that for a while with without a drummer and just using a drum machine just making songs trying to do stuff and we ended up going through a bunch of drummers because drummers were notoriously very hard to find um, well, you find a drummer, but he's already playing for six bands. Yes, <laughs> of course, of course. And But it's finding the right drummer, finding somebody who is comfortable playing in the pocket. You know, just basic 4-4, four, four, like, you know, just kind of almost not necessarily mimicking a drum machine, but kind of keeping in a groove. So luckily, Greg knew somebody, you know, Alex, our drummer, who played drums, but hadn't played in a long time. And he convinced him to come and sit in and play with us. And it's I think it's worked out great. Alex is a great drummer. And I think the music has brought back his interest in playing. And I think it's good for him. I think it's good for the band. I mean, yeah, to be in a band that actually has reignited passion for the band members, uh, usually it's the other way around. Usually people start making music and then and then they, they kind of realize that they're, okay, this w wasn't as important to me as I thought it was going to be. To, to get your bandmates into it more, I'd say that that's a sign that you're on, you're doing the right thing. Yeah, and I and I think it's also great with this band that it comprises people that are into different types of music. They're influenced by different things. So it's not necessarily me sitting there going, we're gonna be a goth band or else, you know, it's not like that. It, it's kind of like everybody puts their own piece of what they like into something and fortunately it always seems to, to be something that we all like 
So that kind of gets me into into the weeds on the genre discussion, but I, I, I kind of have to ask because when I hear this music that uh, everybody but you gets to hear playing in the background right now, um, when I hear this, I it, it it really does make me think of like goth. I mean, I mentioned Echo and the Bunnymen. You mentioned the Mission. Um, it's got just that very classic of effects laden guitar tone that I have associated with goth music um, since I first got into the genre. Uh, so what what would you say, how would you define shoegaze and, and how, how does that work as far as talking to shadows goes? You know, it, it's, it, it's really, to me, it's really complex because I, if you were to ask Greg, you know, our guitar player, and like to, to like whatever name a gothic band he probably would have a hard time i mean he he's really into my bloody valentine mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff right which to me i tried to listen to my bloody valentine and i it's either you get it or you don't and i kind of don't get it you know it's too noisy for me you know my my impression of shoegaze or where I believe kind of what the whole shoegaze thing started out of was, was, um, Jesus and Mary chain. Okay. You know, there was a band that I still really love and it's that whole distorted guitar, the real heaviness of it, that that's the, you know, I see that as the beginning and then I see, a little bit of Cocteau Twins sprinkled in there. And then you start to get into like the 90s where you start to see Mazzy Star, you know? And all those 90s bands are just reaching back to Jesus and Mary Chain and Cocteau Twins, you know? So for, for me, that's kind of where I see the kind of the modern day shoegaze developing. But I think what we do is just again, it's a, it's a blend of a lot of different, a lot of different influences of things, you know. It, like our singer, she likes a lot of that stuff, but she also likes surprisingly a lot of like like doom metal stuff, you know. So her lyrics tend to be on the darker side, which again fits in with with the gothic stuff, right? It, so it's funny um, you mention not really liking my bloody Valentine so in the chat uh, DJ Zion pointing out that she doesn't really either and neither do I and it's just one of those weird things that like no no disrespect to the band obviously but it, sure. one of those things that I was just never able to get into so yeah, that, we've I, got a trifecta going on here yeah yeah, it, it, I, I never, I've tried. It's just like, I just, I can't. It's just too, it's too much noise and, and it's really disjointed for me. You know, I, I it's not really what, what I what I would listen to. You know, that, that makes me think that I have to add a new feature onto this, uh, onto the show now, the new segment of what's one band that you would think or that people would think that you'd be into that you're just not yeah i mean i like a, I like like i said i like a lot of a lot of punk stuff do i buy punk stuff not really you know not anymore i mean i buy you know mostly goth stuff or some of the newer um i guess what they call like dark wave kind yep. of things well i mean at this point like if there's one thing this discussion is making me realize is, is you know, we we, we tend to subgenre things a lot. We tend to break things into various subcategories. And sometimes it, it's just weird because a lot of the bands that you mentioned as uh, just as like the beginning and, and like the renaissance of shoegaze, I was just like, oh, I have just always called that goth music. So... You know, I, I, I feel like we come up with these new categories that 
can be descriptive if everyone understands what the description means. Sure, sure. Like like back back when it all really started, there were there weren't really any kind of defining labels. Like what we what what people call post punk now, we would call industrial, and I'm talking like pre pre nine inch nails. Yeah. Before they started saying industrial, we would call Joy Division industrial. Oh yeah, I mean, well, because you've got some of some of the stuff, you know, very much based um, on like the the whole packing plant sound that of the sounds of the the packing plant that Ian Curtis used to work in. So sure, that's yeah. where that yeah, that's where that comes from, like the working class of England. That that whole post punk thing coming out of there, you know. So yeah, it was it was just industrial. I mean. Jesus and Mary Chain were never, there was no shoegaze. They just were. <laughs> That's all it was. So that, that brings up another important question, though. What shoes should I wear to gaze at while listening to your band? I don't know. You could wear slippers. That <laughs> might work. <laughs> Depends, though. If you're working pedals, I don't know. Will they resist electric shock? Probably not. Right. So you might want to take that into consideration. That's true. If I were the one, I, I feel like if I'm the one pressing all the pedals, then that that that's a very different sort of uh, shoe to gaze at. I'd say Doc Martens are probably your best bet. You know? Works. Yeah. Uh, that. You know what? May, maybe now's the time to get yourself a Doc Martens sponsorship. I, sh I need to because that's what I mostly wear. So <laughs> I don't know. They need to do something. I've been buying them forever. <laughs> How often do I have to buy docs to, before they just give me a pair free? Yeah, right. Or at least a discount. Discount code. So we're talking, uh, first of all, chat really lighting up. So uh, welcome, everybody. And thanks for watching. Um, having a we we're having a discussion about genres that that just don't or bands in certain genres that just don't click for some reason, but also got a comment from Emveline a little bit back, um, at talking about the the difficulty of, of finding like minded musicians. And honestly, this is something that has come up in every single interview I've had so far, talking to bands, how they've had trouble. You know, uh, two of them solo projects were like, I ended up just doing things solo because it was just easier to, to make the music I wanted to make. Do you feel like you kind of lucked in to talking to Shadows at this point to get people from such diverse backgrounds that just happen to all love making the same thing? Um, yeah, I, I think it's definitely a luck factor. Um, yeah, it's again... It, like once, once I heard Carolyn sing, like early, early on, I was like that. I was like that voice is perfect for like how I envision, like whatever. If I'm trying to go for shoegaze, I'm like, yeah, that that's the voice, and and it's natural for her, you know. So you can't just go out and find somebody that is gonna sing that way. It's very hard. You know, just like you're, you're not going to go out and find, you know, the the woman from Mazzy Star. You're not going to go find the woman from Cocktoo Twins. You know, it, it's a very unique sound. To, so to find to find her just in random was very unique. And again, to find Greg was was very unique you know it was the first person that responded to my to my ad and as soon as i heard that guitar i was like that's it that that's exactly what i want i know other people that play the same you know that, that have naturally that style of playing but they never really want to get together and play and form bands so it, it, it's almost like yeah, so it, it, it's kind of like trying to form uh, like a D and D party almost, where you get people, 
You have to find people that want to do it, but then you also have to find people that want to do it enough that they're willing to make the commitment every week to do it. Sure, sure. And there's also the thing, what you were saying about where people get frustrated and sit in their, in their room or whatever and record their own music. You know, I was doing that for a while myself. I mean, I have a little setup in my house where I can create stuff. I have a whole bunch of synthesizers and drum machines that I barely know how to use, but I can get them to do something, you know, and I can create stuff all the time, but it becomes repetitive and very one dimensional, you know, and, and I get it because it's all coming from me, you know, so the songs start to become the same song or a variation of the same song. So when you get a mix of people, you know, you have all these different ideas coming in and you're bouncing ideas off of each other. And then that's what makes the, the songs unique, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, especially when when you manage to get a group with varied talents and varied backgrounds. And, and like you said, just kind of putting all of these influences in a blender and hitting frappe uh, that you, you, you get something that you're not you wouldn't necessarily get if it's just you or if it was a bunch of people coming from the same background. Yeah, I mean, it with Talking to Shadows, I find it very amazing that you have people that you originally see in one role. But then the more you work with people and you get to know them, you realize they have a lot of other skills as well. You know, like Gray can sing really good, you know? And Carolyn can play piano really well, you know? And she can play guitar and our drummer plays guitar, you know? Oh, so Everyone we're, we're, we're going to get at some point a talking sh to shadows uh, song or where it's just everyone plays guitar for the song, right? You know, we're, we're getting ready to go into the studio again. Um, we have some songs and we have a song that we're going to record that we're still trying to develop a little bit, but um, we had Greg, the guitarist was, was singing it. And it sounded great. And it, we were going to do um, some harmony stuff. But now it's like we're just going to have Carolyn sing it, you know? And, but, you know, the, the ideas come from everybody. And we might even get, you know, Carolyn to play some piano on it or, you know, our drummer to play some guitar on it or something, you know? It, it's just whatever works for the song. It's, you're always trying to serve the song. You don't want to fight against it. I think that's a good way to go. I mean, you know, we, we talked about Joy Division a little bit earlier. And one of the most popular Joy Division songs to this day is Love Will Tear Us Apart. And that took the regular guitar player, Bernard Sumter, put him on keyboards and had Ian Curtis play guitar, even though he could play like one chord. Yeah. Uh, and it worked for the song and it ended up becoming one of their biggest hits. Sure. I have a I have a great record of New Order when they came over to America right after Ian died and it, they're playing I th in New Jersey somewhere. And because they were so New Order was so new that each one of them took a turn singing songs. It's really interesting. Well, I, it's almost like quite often some of my favorite stuff from any band is their, their first couple of albums because that's when they're just taking a bunch of risks. They're throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. And, and you know, eventually you, you find, a, you find a, a groove that works for you. But until that moment, like, it's, a, it's still an incredibly exciting time. And it sounds like you all are in that exciting time right now yeah i mean i think our ability to create songs at this stage is is pretty endless i mean we end up throwing away tons of great ideas because they just happen all the time pretty much like when we're at practice it's like greg will be playing something and i'll go wow that sounds really cool and then i'll start playing everybody starts joining in 
you know, and we might have an idea and I record it on my phone. And then we come back next practice and everybody's forgot that we're moving on to something else. You know? <laughs> we're, we're always like, because when it works, you know when it works, it, it becomes instant and it's effortless. It just develops really fast. <laughs> that's that's kind of a sorry it was an amusing thought just like almost spending all that time on a song and then next practice like all right let's try not to think about that because this this idea is too cool to to let go of well yeah that that happens a lot like again like a song we're getting ready to to record um you know, we a similar thing started to happen, and luckily, you know, our our drummer is good at becoming good at using like some sort of doll thing, you know, recording equipment. And what's so amazing is like he liked that song so much, and I liked it too. And I was worried it was going to end up in the rubbish heap, right? He took that song and added like guitar keyboards all kind of stuff to it so that we had a solid version of it and that brought that song back to life <laughs> like the, the drummer just sitting there with the uh with the pads clear literally that's what he did he, i mean and, it, and what's even more amazing because i'm so technologically illiterate i had um one of those interface boxes and I, I just didn't have the time to figure out how to use it so i thought it was dead and he's like hey you still got that laying around and i gave it to him he's like i got it to work and i'm like well good for you <laughs> i turn knobs i don't really worry about computers and stuff Well, it's a good thing he's in the band then. Yeah, because like I said, everybody has something that they can contribute and do. It, it, I think my my big contribution to the band is really just trying to identify directions of songs and trying to figure out what what's good, you know? Mm -hmm. Like people, like Greg, I said, it just effortlessly comes up with great lines all the time, you know. So he writes the stuff. I just, I just play along. You, yeah, you, you're the passenger when that happens. Then, yeah, but but to a certain extent, though, I also direct it because he could have a line, and and that's all he's got. And then I figure out where the line's going to go. Okay. You know, where's the hook, you know, is, is the big thing. It's one thing to have a line, like an opening verse, but it's like, where's the hook? Where's the bridge? That's, that's kind of where you come in. So, and again, that just, it, it makes it sound almost like a, a, a big team effort. Like each of you has your own strengths. And, sure. and by your powers combined, we have talking to shadows. Yeah, I think everybody contributes equally to to the ideas. That's that's fantastic to hear, honestly. That's a I don't know, it's a it's a heartwarming, like my heart grew three sizes today story. There you go. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like we're in our live stuff, right? Now, being a, a person that is very interested in gothic music and all things goth related, you know, you would think I'd be the first person going, where's the smoke machine? You know, mm -hmm. I'm the last, I was the last person to say, let's get a smoke machine. You know, Greg's like, let's get smoke machines right the least goth dude is saying let's get smoke machines i mean it that's fits what, with the music though yeah but that but it's but see he naturally thinks like that because that's kind of a part of him is connected to kind of what we're doing even though he doesn't even listen to gothic music time to get him started 
So, yeah. <laughs> so that's a good segue to talk about you guys just played a show recently. Yeah. Yeah, we played we played Auto Bar recently with RJ VJ from Baltimore and I just became buddies with Amulet from DC. Okay. We're really really great people and we brought them in too. So it was good. So you know, talking to Shadows just kind of recently coming together. Like did you guys form the band before the pandemic yeah it this this project's been kind of like i said it's it's kind of evolved like it's it started out with three of us then the guitars you know quit laugh whatever you know so this project's been around for quite some time it's just been various stages of it going on until we found the right fit of people you know, it, it just took a long time. So how did the how did the pandemic really affect this metamorphosis that you all underwent? Um, I think it only impacted us by three months, maybe, okay. you know, because, you know, we got to a point where, you know, everybody's freaking out about the pandemic. And then I guess, you know, in our case, people got sick of freaking out and we're like, you know what, you know, we, we need to practice. And because we communicate with each other and I would consider everyone in the band an adult, you know? So, you know, it, we felt safe enough to be able to do it. We have our own practice room. Right. So it was, it was good for us in our practice space to feel safe, to be able to go in. So we just kept playing. We kept practicing, kept working on music. Have you, like a lot of bands, have you found that doing stuff live has been rather challenging? Um, it, it comes and goes with that kind of stuff. It, it's all based on the pandemic. It, it's up and down, you know, here in Baltimore, you know, like everywhere else, you know, we did, we did a show with Boot Blacks here in Baltimore. I and love Boot Blacks. Yeah, they're great. And we did a show with them in November and then the new variant came in and then all of a sudden everything's just kind of getting shut down. You know, yeah, and you know everybody was nervous. Nobody know knew what to do, and then, you know, we had to kind of just sit and wait. We just kept practicing, kept doing stuff, and we're waiting, you know, sitting around waiting for the right time to to do a show. Right. You know, and then we did one at this small place here in Baltimore, and then we did the auto bar show. So you know. Now we're just kind of sitting around, we're taking a minute and, you know, we're going to try to do some shows, hopefully in the spring. And then we're going to try to get into the studio in the summer, hopefully. Um, and I'm trying to, to book some, some shows, some out of town shows, you know, go, go on like a little run with, with Amulet again from DC. I want to go down south for a couple of dates and then try to go up north, you know, trying to make connections with people to do shows. But of course, that means that you've got to find enough places that are open. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. And, and and places, you know, a lot of places I'm, I'm not really super familiar with. So, you know, finding places where there's people that like our kind of music or, you know, darker music in general, yeah. where they have a little bit of a scene to support it, you know? And, and again, with all that's going on in the world right now, you know, we got gas prices going through the roof, you know? So it's like, yeah, it can I, be expensive. I hadn't noticed, said the person that uh, <laughs> commutes to work every day. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, so who knows what it'll look like when we get ready to try to do that. 
you know? So okay. have, have you thought about doing, like, any sort of, of streaming concerts? Any sort of even just, like, streaming practices? Um, as, as far as for broadcast stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it would be really cool. Um, again, it's, you know, what, what kind of technical skills do, do people have? You know, I know Greg, our guitarist, is really good with a lot of that kind of stuff. I don't know how good he is at it. You if know, I can do it. Anyone can do it. Yeah, I've I've seen some brilliant some brilliant streaming things. You know, it's it's just having the the knowledge to be able to do it. You know, I mean, I would certainly love to get on some of these streaming goth events that people have for sure. Awesome. So kind of uh, veering away from that, you know, we talk talk about you've got uh, the trying to get back in the studio, looking to, to do any sort of a tour. Um as far as the future of talking to shadows is going, do you think like you've found the group now? Do you feel like there's any pieces missing at this point? Or is it is now the future of talking to shadows just kind of nailing down what everyone's going to do? Um, I think, I think we've got all the people we need to do it. Um, like I said, everybody has a whole bunch of different skills I, I just think it's continuing to develop develop the music. It you know when when you look at the music we have out now, um, three of those songs on our EP, we wrote those songs prior to our current guitarist and drummer. Okay. So those songs were written, you know me carolyn and and the old guitarist right but we just that's all we had so we just started playing those and then greg learned how to play those and because that's again all we had and we kept adding you know more people people would leave people come in so it was a constant like relearning process for for ourselves and for new people and that's how we were like well, we got to put something out. So these are the most familiar songs we know. We have them down really good. So we're going to put that out, right? But the band has has evolved sound-wise because we played together longer. So our our newer stuff, I think, is is really, really good. And, and I'm really excited to get in the studio and really bring that out well awesome i look forward to hearing it yeah it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be really good it's in the same vein but it's just it's just really good songwriting and i i think just everybody's really in sync with with this stuff well i'm excited because i already love the the ep that you released and to just know that that's actually like the kind of the the earlier era and what's coming next is the stuff that you're even more excited about that makes me excited yeah so. we we might we have another song from that same session that is a song that that we wrote that with with everybody in the band that, that we recorded. And I think we might put that out in the spring. You know, it, that song is definitely, it's a lot heavier. It, it's a mix of, of stuff. It, it's, you know, again, cause the band is made up of so many different influences. You know, the, the song is a mix of real heavy, like what, what people consider that, you know, my bloody Valentine style shoegaze. Mm -hmm. But then it breaks off into what I would consider more along the lines of a Cocktoo Twins thing, you know? I definitely get so, that one especially. Yeah, so, it, you know, we have that song sitting, but um, I know that the stuff we're going to record 
coming up in, in the summer is going to be really good and it and it's kind of you know stays in in that in that vein of you know the real almost kind of dream poppy kind of gothy dark stuff you know because i think that's what the band naturally produces makes sense well Ron, I uh, I can't say that I'm excited enough, apparently, but that I'm I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I really want to thank you for joining me on the show today. Um, was there anything else you wanted to to let us know about before I uh, cut you loose? Um, no, not really. I mean, if anybody knows anybody that you know wants us to come and play, wants us to do any like you were saying the live stream stuff i mean we can figure out the technology we'll make it work you know we, we have, have the have, will yes we have the will we we just have to get the opportunity That's you know right. we can make it happen for sure and where can people find your music ron um we're on Bandcamp. we have a lot of the live videos up on youtube facebook page Awesome. Instagram, all that good stuff. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, again, big thanks to uh, Ron Weldon of Talking to Shadows for joining me tonight. Uh, and also, I do want to do a quick shout out to Umbris Day, uh, who's been throwing out a lot of bits and subscriptions to keep this show running, uh, making sure that uh, I have money to keep doing this. So thanks. Yes, he's great. <laughs> and he uh, absolutely great. So uh, up next, got the after party. So stick around for that if you're listening live. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube, uh, I guess get ready to watch another video or something. But again, Ron, thank you very much. Thanks to everybody in chat. And uh, see you in a bit.